Splinter Cell Blacklist. Been having a lot of fun with this game. I was surprised how good it actually is. I thought it was going to be more like uh, like the previous one, uh, full of action and, and not that stealthy based anymore. And I was that was partially due to the fact that I had only seen one gameplay trailer, and from what I saw in uh, in that trailer, I thought stealth wasn't going to be the main focus uh, again. And, uh, and was going to lean more towards um, Splinter Cell Conviction in terms of gameplay. But I was wrong. The game is, uh, is going back to its roots, uh, apparently, from what I've uh, seen and played. Uh, going all stealthy again. Um, but it's still not perfect. And I think a lot, a lot of you who have been playing the franchise from the very first game will agree with that. The game sometimes just isn't that hard anymore or challenging. Um, at least if you play on normal or, or even hard. Um, but even if you play on a hardest difficulty, which I'm doing, um, the game sometimes doesn't really feel hard enough, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, there's a very small learning curve that makes the game very accessible to the everyday, regular, normal motherfucker. <laughs> I'm wondering if people actually know where that line uh, comes from. Anyways, I'm gonna go <laughs> go on with the uh, with the commentary. Um, with, for the real fans uh, of the franchise who have been there from the beginning and uh, and other players that enjoy a real challenge. Um, I don't really think that they will be fully satisfied, but it's still an excellent game, and it's a big step up from uh, from Conviction, uh, and this game definitely restored my faith in the franchise. Now, the narrative is quite good, um, I, <laughs> as good as it can get, I guess, in a Splinter Cell game. Um, you see a lot of locations, different environments, um, so you will definitely you definitely won't get bored with this game while playing it. The cinematics and cutscenes uh, are very well done as well. It really gives you that feeling like when you're watching an episode of Homeland. Um, that's another thing I wanted to mention along with, uh, with the dialogue. The story isn't that great. You know, it's your classic, the world's gonna end and you gotta save it kind of story. But the dialogue is, is very strong and, and, and very well written. And it gives the impression that you know the characters after playing uh, a couple of hours or even less. The new Spies vs. Mercs mode is quite good. I haven't really played enough of the game to fully review it, uh, at least of the of the multiplayer. Uh, but you can expect that in the future, along with some uh, with some gameplay of that. I actually had a really good gameplay earlier today, but I just forgot to record, which is stupid, stupid Dolce. Uh, now you probably are all wondering why Sam Donovan. <laughs> well, it's just because. For some reason, Sam Fisher somehow reminds me of Ray Donovan. Uh, I guess it's just because of how badass he looks and uh, it sounds. Or maybe because I've been really into the show. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> uh, and if you've never heard of Ray Donovan, go check out the show. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain the plot. First off, it's, it's a really good show. Uh, a lot of good actors. Um, it's kind of hard to explain the plot. The only thing that I can say is that it's good, although it starts off a little bit slow uh, in a way that you don't really know what's going on with the characters and you don't really know what their stories yet. Um, but I would say after being two, maybe three episodes in, uh, that's when you get hooked. At least that's when I got hooked. Uh, and the cast, uh, again, is just so good. So good. Uh, that really surprised me, actually. They, they had to spend a fortune on the cast. Um, you've got Leap Schreiber, um, you got the hooker from Deadwood, I can't remember her name, so I'm just gonna call her the, uh, the Lady of the Night from Deadwood. Um, then you have freaking John Foyt! Man, I, I didn't even know that he acted anymore. Um, James Woods, of course, awesome, awesome man. Um, and they all play their roles so fantastically. I mean, seriously, you guys should all go check out the show. It's great. Just do it. Go check it out. But enough Hollywood talk. Um, I would actually like to talk uh, a little bit about Battlefield 4 really quick before I leave you guys. So um, at Gamescom, everyone was able to test out the latest build of Battlefield 4 on PC. But some people were able to play um, a ported alpha version on the PS4. And um, someone from IGN got his hands on it. Uh, and uh, supposedly to him, how the game looked uh, on the console had him worried. Um, he, he went as far as saying that the, the moment he sat down, he was surprisingly underwhelmed by the visuals. And he pointed out some specific things like uh, textures not looking finished and the particles looking uh, dull. 
he also mentioned that the weapons uh, weren't looking right when he was uh, ADSing, I think. Um, and I'm, I'm not really surprised by hearing this, though I'm sure most of it has to do with the fact that the game is still in alpha. Uh, don't forget that, people. Alpha is still very early stage. And a lot of things, um, like textures, still have to be polished. Uh, they might even do the same thing uh, they did with Battlefield 3 on the consoles with their HD texture pack uh, you could install. But even after the game is fully, fully released, I don't really expect the game to look that great on the future consoles because the game is going to run at 60 frames per second at a native resolution of uh, 720p or higher, uh, as it's rumored. Uh, and then upscale, of course, to 1080. So considering low-end GPUs in the consoles, they obviously will have to make a lot of sacrifices in the graphics department. That's just the way it is. There's no other way around it. But it's certainly not something to get butthurt over. Uh, it, it wouldn't be an issue for me, to be honest, if I was playing the alpha, because I'm, I'm sure that DICE will patch this up for the open beta. Besides, I take frames and better resolution over graphics any day of the week. But what do you guys think of this? Um, all you guys are going to get Battlefield 4 on the consoles. Do you really care that much um, about the graphics? Or are you just happy that you're finally going to have the full Battlefield experience at 60 frames per second with the uh, 64 man servers? Let me know in the comments. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to leave a rating and possibly sharing the video. I am Dolce, and I'll see you in the next video.